Adidas, the headwind pushing us far. It's almost over. The tunnel is not as dark as when we start. It's getting clearer. And it's going to be brighter and brighter. In the name of the Lord. So, the capacity to work to the people are to communicate and share joy. Is what I will continue to preach about. Okay, welcome back. So, quite a number of things going on today. So, the unfortunate development in Delta State is one of them. You also did hear us talk early on where the Patriots will be having their event as well today. And then it's not over with the suspension of Senator Nigi in the Senate. So, Quite a lot playing up today, but we've got Mr. Femi Fanana, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, joining us virtually. Uh, he, he's uh, speaking about, I mean, he had released a statement about that incident in Delta State and what he thinks and how he thinks the uh, military authorities should also go on. So uh, we'll have him virtually join us pretty soon. But we also do have Mr. Kasim Afegwa here with us in the studios. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you very much for having me. So quite a lot uh, going on. And uh, even the ones that happened from the weekend up until, I mean, last week up until this week, which is the Senate. But about this particular matter where the president is uh, speaking up too about the uh, unfortunate incident in Delta State. So, um, yes, we've seen several perspectives and comments. Quite a number of people are shocked as to what exactly happened. Now concerns are how should one, the military respond, the community members themselves, what becomes of that community, because people are referencing what has happened previously in OD and how they had responded. And so where is the law in all of this? So it's caution, apprehension, almost everywhere. How does this come across to you? Uh, well, let me first and foremost use this opportunity to condole the families of those gallant officers and soldiers who lost their lives timely. Incidentally, Lieutenant Colonel Al-Hassan Ali happens to be a very good friend. I still spoke with him last week. And he was just contemplating that in seven years' time he was going to retire from the army and face life outside the army, that he has had his own uh, uh, time, you know, and uh, only for me to wake up two days back and send a message to me that Ali was dead. Quite painful. Uh, again, I've listened to quite a number of commentaries on this issue. People saying that the military shouldn't be drafted into issues of internal security. There are police in the lead agency when it comes to internal security. I agree, but you see, the volatility in the country oftentimes also calls for military intervention. Uh, oftentimes, these criminals call them whatever name. They don't expect police. If there's anybody they respect, it's partly military, and perhaps even maybe vigilante, because they feel that vigilante they, uh, have some kind of uh, extraterrestrial power, let me put it that way, that they can use to mitigate some of these crises. You know, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't think the military went to Oklahoma community to, 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 to fight you know, the community. I think they went... They said to resolve the issue in an amicable manner, but that there was breakdown in communication when they addressed the indigents, you know, in the in the community hall. But essentially, we need to consistently and continuously preach, you know, national integration. There is there are too many cracks, too many fra fractures, that is not making us to see ourselves as one. There is too much of uh, parochial patriotism. Clannish sentiments, all, you know, hemorrhaging in the same, you know, uh, political landscape. And so for, for us as a people, you may even ask yourself, why would two communities be involved in this kind of uh, intercommunal crisis to the extent that it will lead to this kind of program? And so for me, I think we must devote time under a democracy, because it's all about dialogue. 
We must devote time preaching national integration, mm -hmm. national orientation. Let us see ourselves as one. Let's begin to appreciate the beauty of collegiate responsibility. And so that when we are confronted with these kind of issues, we know that we are driving in the same direction, mm -hmm. not different direction. Because it's quite disturbing when you see things happening in all of these communities and uh, look at the lives of people and soldiers that have been you know, lost as a result of this uh, lack of uh, love you know, amongst ourselves. Yeah. Well, you know, I just want to introduce, uh, yes. thankfully we can see him now, Mr. Femi Falano joins us now, Mr. Femi Falano, Senior Advocate of Nigeria and also a very prominent human rights activist who's also written on this matter. Uh, Mr. Falano, it's so good to have you join us this morning. Good morning and welcome to the program. Thank you very much, uh, Mopin. Well, you have been expressing your own concerns about this current situation in, in Okwama community. Uh, what precisely are you afraid of as a result of what has happened uh, with, with, uh, this, with the soldiers, with the killing of the soldiers in Okwama community? Well, uh, I reacted to the unfortunate incident on, on Saturday. It was on the 15th, barely 24 hours. Unfortunately, the government never reacted until the 17th, yesterday. Now, I pleaded on and was expressing sympathy with the bereaved families of the slain soldiers. I pleaded with the military authorities to prevent repressal attacks because of our experience in Nodi, in Zakibian, Baramantu, and others. It was very clear to any discerning mind in the country that there will likely be a, rep a repressal attack. More so than the gory pictures of the military officers and soldiers that were killed were circulating in the media. Unfortunately, nothing was done by way of statements from the government on the 15th and the 16th whereby the military authorities and soldiers would be, uh, you know, made to believe that the government, you know, was really uh, grieving with them. And so in the night, on the night of the 16th, angry soldiers stormed Okwama village and set it on fire. For me, it is avoidable. And, and you see, you can't blame soldiers alone. There is a general position in the society whereby, because of loss of confidence in the judicial system, everybody, uh, you know, embraces more justice. Even the statement of the president yesterday, we are in a civilian and democratic system of government. The president cannot order military authorities to fish out a, a, a civilians involved in a, a heinous crime. That is the duty of the police. In this case, it was reported by the chief of defense staff. This I read that on Saturday. General Christopher Musa, that some arrests have been made. So what I expected the authorities in Delta State to do on that day was to have these suspects transferred to the police so that on Monday morning, this morning, they will be charged before the court. And a statement ought to have been made. We have arrested the criminal elements. We are going to have them arraigned in court on Monday. At least that will go a long way to douse the tension that was allowed to mount, culminating, unfortunately, in the attack on uh, Okwama village. We saw this in uh, uh, Zakibia. We saw this in Odi. We saw it in uh, uh, and when people went to court, nobody was talking of those who were killed. Nobody was looking for the criminals that killed. It was like a question of 
those who were made victims through collective punishment, which is not part of our law. So this is my worry about this. Again, once again, I want to take advantage of this forum to express my heartfelt sympathy, you know, uh, and condolences to the bereaved families and the enforcers. Because this shouldn't happen in a civilized society. So let's, Mr. Falala, I'm so sorry to interrupt you, but if I get you correctly, what you are saying is, I mean, what I get that is your most potent fear right now is the fear of collective punishment. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, please. Hmm. Because there are innocent people in Okwama who are as angry as the government in ensuring that these criminal elements are brought to justice. But when you go and set their houses on fire and attack innocent people, you have offended domestic laws because it is right in our country that there is no vicarious liability in criminality. Two, Nigeria domesticated the Geneva Convention in 1960 and under Article 33 of the Geneva Convention. Collective punishment is prohibited. Repressal attacks are not allowed. Mm -hmm. Innocent people cannot be attacked, even in a war situation. And, and it does serve, you know, that these reminders are given, especially in a situation where the military feels, not just the military, because uh, as the president uh, ha has said, the attack on the soldiers, soldiers who have pledged their lives in service of this country uh, for, this for a group of youths to just brazenly attack them and murder them in the manner which they did. I mean, these are people who had gone into a community to try and keep the peace between that community and another community in a situation where, I mean, you highlighted the fact that the police should have been the one doing such a job. But right now we have delegated that responsibility to the military. And in this instance, they were representing Nigeria. So how do you think that a country can send home a message to groups of youth? Because these are not just, it's not just these youths this youth in this community that are looking. There'll be a host of other communities that are going to be looking at how this particular situation is handled and how the Nigerian nation can say, look, a lot of things are happening in the country, totally unacceptable, but this is something that will never be tolerated. Attack on soldiers and men of Nigeria trying to keep the peace somewhere. Uh, 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 my in 2023, 43,000 people were killed in the United States of America through gun violence and mass killings, including innocent school children. But, but I can assure you, in each of those cases, the system has been deployed to pursue all the criminal elements involved, whether they're in the state or they have left the country. In this case, if there is a killing, not just of soldiers, even of civilians, we must, as a people, develop a system that will hunt the killers and have them prosecuted. A, a few years ago, about three, about four or five years ago, a general, a retired general, was arrested by criminal elements in Jos, butchered and buried in a shallow grave. What happens at the end of the day? The police went into the matter and arrested the 19 criminal elements involved and had them charged. And this is what is done in a civilized society. In this particular instance, arrests have been made through those who have been arrest, uh, arrested or their all the other culprits who have been arrested, arraigned in court, and then the case speedily tried so that members of the public would know that this government, or indeed any government in Nigeria, will not tolerate the killing of soldiers, the killing of civilians, and so on and so forth. In, in uh, on, uh, 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 I think, December 12, 2015, 
There was an incident in Zaria. Uh, Mr. Falano, certainly we, 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 it's a very interesting part of the conversation that we are having now, you know, but, you know, I, I'd like to take a cue. By the way, we have with us here Dr. Tunji Abayomi, who is a human rights activist as well as a legal practitioner joining in the conversation. Thank you for joining us this morning. Okay. One of the uh, issues raised around this matter when um, Chamberlain and Mark were talking to Mr. Kasima Fegwa was that you know, perhaps there is a need for national cohesion, that there is a, a national cohesion gap could have been responsible for the kind of um, incidents that we have in, in, in the Delta, in that Delta community. Mm -hmm. How do you, what, what's your take on that? Well, I don't think, I think what we need is national order, not national cohesion, national order. Um, the structure of the nation is a problem of the nation. And unless you get it right, things will get worse and worse and worse. Dr. Bayomi, is this is about two communities that are side by side. Yes. They are not from one region of Nigeria to another region. Yes. It's not the south against the uh, north. It's not the southwest against the um, um, central, north central. Yes. It's about two communities in the same state, in the same environment, warring. How is that a national issue? I'm talking of the structure. For example, managing peace and disorder, crisis, communal crisis, and so on and so forth. They are all national issues, as are today. Uh, the avenue to manage internal communal crisis or crises is it managed by the national center. And that's why a lot of people, for example, are talking of um, state police and so on and so forth. So what I'm in essence saying is that this, the, the problem of this nation is, is multidimensional. And um, the central fugal forces are all over the, pla all over the place. We, we need to build something that can be managed effect effectively. Uh, after all, if we look at this whole lesson, the government is for peace, order and good government. That's why. So, the problem there is, is all over. If you look at the nation, the nation is in crisis. Crisis. So, what I'm in essence saying is that we've got to take a look at the structure. All of these are consequences. Fruits. What I would call fruits of a poisonous tree. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to make sense of it, uh, Dr. Bami. I'm, I, I'm truly sorry. This is a community. Yeah. And uh, you've heard Mr. Falano refer to the OD and Zakibiam incidences yeah. Yeah. Um, and the reprisals that happened as a result. Yeah. So where, where is the correlation between these incidences that tend to have similar similarities? Yeah. For instance, in both instances, we had a situation where the military went in. And there are those who believe that, look, this should be, as Mr. Falano said, the primary function of the police. But then there are those who also say that, look, have, is the police effective enough? I think uh, Mr. Febwa also referenced yes. that earlier. Is the police able to really hold on to that, uh, to, to, the, to, the, to that order yes. and, and, and maintain the peace in a way that the military doesn't have to come in? Of course, the police is unable all over, all over the country, even in this Lagos And why is that? Because the structure of the country is defective. There are problems What kind of foundation. What kind of structures, what kind of problems? There are so many of them. There's a problem of, there's a problem of economics, the tension among the people. There's a problem of security. There's a problem of education. There's a problem of life, livelihood. There's a problem of uh, judicial uh, and assurance of remedy. So what I mean in essence, all of these are consequential. That's the point I'm making. 
For example, why do we need to send soldiers to maintain communal peace? Because there is a problem. Police are unable to do it. Today, how many people have confidence? Mr. Falano is talking of is the work of the police. Which police? I mean, on a serious note, tell me the percentage of Nigerians that have even the most minimum confidence in national police. Actually, none. I mean, what are we talking about? That's a problem of this nation. So what I'm in essence saying is that all of these are consequential. But isn't there a responsibility for community leaders as well in this matter? That's part of the problem I'm talking about. So if you have an appropriate structure of a nation, community leaders will have their place. Responsibility, but they do have relationship a... between the government and... But they do have their place in the, in the, in the local government administrations. I mean, there are those who would put the, the responsibility of the local governments not working the way it ought to work at the doorsteps of the governors. And that is usually the... where the, the, uh, the, 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 the traditional institutions, monarchs, community leaders usually have a say. Please tell me one single local government that is functioning properly in Nigeria. A local government is created in the constitution. It's a facade. Yeah. Tell me one single local government in this nation, in spite of constitutional backing, that is functioning properly mm -hmm. within the local government environment. The point I'm making is there's a need for the people to actually be serious about government. They have delegated their powers to government, but what manner of government? Yeah. And that's where we are. Okay. Well, there, there's a lot more to go on that one, but let, let me ask you, uh, Mr. Afegwa, I, I, I apologize, by the way, I mean, we lost uh, the signals with Mr. Fallon at the other time, and uh, we'll, certainly we'll have him back. As soon as we do, we'll let you know. Well, Mr. Afegwa, you've listened to Mr. Fallon, and you've also listened to uh, Dr. Uh, Tunja Bayomi here, and um, a number of issues that so many people would also want to raise is, does this have to happen? Uh, do you see, what, what, the, what are the issues, in your opinion, that gave rise to this incident in the first place? You, are talk, you spoke the other time that there is a need to look at this thing more from a national uh, perspective than from a local perspective, even though it's a local issue. That's what you started with the other time. And you've also questioned the capacity or not of the police being able to stem this tide before the military came in. Was there a, co a communication problem at some point, because I also recall that there is one traditional ruler who said, look, he thought that this thing ought to have been dealt with, and that he was told that it was being handled. Was there a communication link that was broken at some point that saw us to where we are now? How do we ensure this doesn't happen again? How do we manage this going forward? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me remind, uh, you know, Mr. Femi Falano essay, and that it's not all the time that we blame government for every incident, uh, particularly when it has to do with issuing of statements and what have you. I think we should be tired of even issuing statements. We should be able to do things collectively, both as a people and government, to ensure that we nip some of this crisis in the board. Uh, the, the military authority issued a statement immediately this happened, and the president had to you know, uh, <clears throat> also take stock before he will issue his own statement. I think that is rested. Uh, on, the, on the question you have asked, you see, the question I asked earlier is, where will even two communities be involved in this kind of uh, intercommunal clashes to the extent that it will claim this number of lives of our soldiers? What is the social responsibility of the citizenry, even to the military, when you see a man in a military uniform, what comes to your mind as a citizen of the country? What, 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 what kind of relationship should exist between military and the civilians? How do we perceive the military? How do we also perceive the police? If you, if you know how volatile the system has been now, there's literally little or no respect for the police when it comes to intercommunal clashes and police have been drafted to go and you know, mitigate, you know, such crisis. And uh, they, 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 they oftentimes respect the soldiers and the military more than the police. 
That's why I'm advocating that there has to be a complete attitudinal reorientation of minds. Citizens must be conscientized and mobilized to know their role, functional role. You don't sit back and you attack, you know, institutions of government, and yet you want the government to still do for you what you are trying to uh, so we'll try to destroy. You, you yeah. statement yourself too, threatening to shut down. Mr. Akpabio, and you're here saying Mr. Fana should not issue statements. No, 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 no. I didn't say should issue. I said shouldn't blame government all the time. Uh -huh. I'm not saying he has the right to issue statements. He shouldn't blame government all the time about not re re issuing statements immediately. Is it, I said is, the isn't military, it no, the, mil the, mil the mil military authority issued the statement on the issue. He's saying that on the 16th that he didn't say any statement on the 17th before the president spoke. The president will not jump to you know, to yeah, but, but, but why did you issue your own statements? So My own statement to, to shut down the National Assembly, National Assembly if they pitch uh, because, up. Uh, because it, that, that, it's their process. No. Whatever they do, that shouldn't they, should we be interfering with their process? What what process? The National Assembly. I mean, they're lawmakers. They follow their processes and their rules. <laughs> you see, the, the the issues are deeper than that, uh, Chamberlain. It's it's come to a point that I was arguing yesterday with some people that Nigeria is not a country yet. We don't have a nation. The ownership structure of the country is fragmented along ethnic and parochial lines. And so whether you like it or not, you may pretend to be in Nigeria when you are here, but the reality on ground shows that there are so many countries, subnationals, at different levels. So when you come to the National Assembly, it's supposed to be an assembly of 109 senators from the 109 senatorial districts across the country, which is like a good assembly to reflect the wishes and aspirations of people, of the, of the constituents in those 109 settings. And now there have been scenarios where there have been senators, senate presidents, you have had uh, Saraki, we have had uh, 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 Ahmed Lawan in the immediate past, now we have Apabio. I was one of those who championed the cause that it has to be the turn of the South South to produce a senate president, even when the South East were trying to lay claim to it. Because I said they have produced five Senate presidents in eight years before. There was David Mark in the Senate as Senate president for eight years. Heaven did not fall. For God's sake, are we just hearing about the issue of pardon? Are we just hearing the issue about financial impropriety and what have you? We are not just hearing all of these issues. And so why is it that? Because the uh, absorption of office of Senate president Akpabio was so keenly contested, so to speak, People are now raising every little issue to we'll talk about impeachment. Shouldn't, be, shouldn't, be a, shouldn't there be a way of constructive engagement and collective bargaining in all of this? Why must it just be, oh, we want to impeach him? Is it because he's from the South-South? And that's, what, that's my angle where I came in from. Is it because he's from the South-South? And for, that, for, uh, for, uh, for what reason are you going to impeach him? Because whatever you are seeing in, this, in the Senate today, it did not just start. It has started before. People have been there before. Did, did they live above board? No. So why must it be that it, it because it's done on South South? If he lives there, who are, who are you going to put? Okay. You, want to, you want to alter the uh, calculation? We've had the narration before that the president is from the South, that the chief justice of Nigeria is from the South, that the Senate president is from the South, that they will not allow. Them. But time was when Buhari was, uh, was the president of the country. We have Tanko as uh, they say, we have Saraki as, uh, as the Senate president, and even Lawan. So why is it that people, certain sections of the country, want to? Lord themselves over us and think that we are fools and that we should sit down and watch without talking. But That's, some people that will say that, that there is a problem with your argument. First, you have already, uh, you've just decried how clannishness is leading us to all manner of, uh, will I say, all manner of misdemeanors and in some cases, great harm to our country. Uh, you complain about that when we're talking about the issue of the killing of soldiers. Uh, so if the statement is not exactly promoting clannishness, I don't know what it is doing. No, no. You see, let me tell you. I, I, I've just told you that we don't have a country. And so no, no, clannishness... No, 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 no wait. They're two wait. different things. A country and a no, nation no, no, are two wait, different they, things. Yeah, both country and nation, both of them. Let me tell you. Both clannishness are a function of the fact that there is no nation. And that and Kasim Afeba will not stop it this morning. For, for whatever it is worth... What we have going for us now is different interest groups competing for national attention. And that's why, you see, we differ more to our clan sentiments, our uh, ethnic conclave, than the national. Mm. And, and, and I don't have any apology to render because 
over the years. I have fought for, oh, let's have a nation, let's do this, let's do that. I've so you're giving up on that but fight? I have given up because I've discovered that the more, the more you try to push for nationalistic patriotism, the more certain elements are looking at Nigeria from the north-south divide. Mm. You know, east, well, I, west, I wonder west, what Mr. Tunja Bayami will and, have to and, say no, about no, that. No, 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 let me learn. Yeah. And, and, and essentially, when you look at uh, uh, Senator Ningi's argument, his argument is that, oh, his constituency had, had two billion, and some other persons in the south had uh, 12 billion or even 100 billion, what have you. But I'm saying that there has been a precedent. What did Ningi say when Amela was there when he took a lot of projects to So that, that, that's, that's another so problem. Yes. That's the second problem which you've just highlighted. The yes. second problem is that it doesn't matter the level of misappropriation or the level of malfeasance leveled against a public official. If it's the turn of that particular region, the person must have out their term regardless. No, yes. uh, and some people will say that's problematic. <laughs> no, because, no, 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 no. It's not, nobody has established any financial malfeasance. Because the argument of Ningit is that uh, certain, certain monies were not properly allocated and you can't, you can't read through the line. Mm -hmm. But the chairman of the appropriation committee, Adeola, uh, Senator Yayi, uh, gave a valid explanation to the first line charge, the statutory uh, budgets for all of those uh, ministries and agencies and prosecutors of government. Mm -hmm. And so that argument of my financial malfeasance was not clearly established against anyone. Mm -hmm. But the point... Um, um, uh, Ningi was speaking from the point of ethnic parochialism. He was talking that, oh, in the north this happened, uh, in the south this happened, and it didn't happen in his own constituency. And I'm saying that when other uh, Senate president from other parts of the country presided over, over the National Assembly, we had sim similar scenario, and the call for impeachment did not arise. Well, Mr. Fanana, I know you certainly will also have something to say. First, it's talked about... Uh, the fact that you called for a statement um, that should have come, you believe it should have come much earlier and perhaps would have had the potential to douse, uh, you know, what we're now seeing happening in Okwama. But let me take you up. Now we've seen a statement released by the president. It's a very strong statement saying this is not going to be allowed in any way. The, the perpetrators need to be fished out. You made reference to the fact that the DHQ also released a statement in that uh, in the in in the aftermath of what had happened, um, I, I, in some ways, are you reassured that this might not go down the path of OD or Zaki Biam, uh, which easily come to mind when matters like this come up? It has already happened. A whole village has been raised down. It's burnt to ashes, and we can't go on like this. The point we are making: every right-thinking person must condemn what happened. In Okwama, every right thinking past. But how do you go about it so that it will never happen again? Let us now start to fight mob justice, jungle justice in our country. Because this is the bottom line. It's not whether you have a nation or you don't have a nation. Once we have not restructured the country, we must have some irreducible minimum standard. And when you are discussing something very, very serious, we cannot afford to ethnicize crimes. Oh, because this man is a senator from my region. Therefore, if he loses the treasury, I will clear for him. You don't run any society that way. It's the same thing with killing. And I'm saying, with profound respect, that even when uh, 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 a policeman is killed by a soldier, he's not just... In the last two years, not less than 200 people have been killed through jungle justice, from Sokoto to Calabar, you know, Maiduguri and the rest of them. Let us now decide as a people, what there is a killing of any citizen, whether you're a soldier, a police pers a person, or a civilian, we must ensure that we fish out the, the murderers and have them prosecuted in a properly constituted court. But once we saw soldiers are killed, please go and level with a village. We are going to create more problems. And I am saying, based on experience, the, the attacks on Oti, Sakibian, and Ramotu, the federal high court, different divisions of the federal court, awarded the total sum of 
199 billion naira. In the case of uh, Zaki Biam, it was 41 billion. In the case of Bayesa, Odi, 37 billion. And the case of Baramatu, 100 billion. Part of this money has been paid. We are not, nobody was talking of the criminals in those places who caused the problem. So let us take advantage of it. Certain, some of the uh, uh, murder suspects have been arrested. Let's have them arranged. All the others, ask the police to look for them. And whether you want to trust the police or not, all the other cases where proper investigation has been done have been conducted by the police. And we have got the murderers. I mean, mm. those who kill. In case of a general in, in just another. But well, it, it is not, you know, and, and I made this point. When you had the last bombing incident of civilian, what they normally call accidental bombing, over 300 been bombed. What has the government done to do justice, to compensate the victims? And my, my statement on Saturday was that both the federal government and the Delta state government will have to reach out to the families of the police soldiers and compensate them mm -hmm. while we are persecuting the murder suspect. And this is how it is done in any civilized society. But to say, oh, we have a, we don't have a nation. Therefore, criminality should reign supreme. Yeah, but Mr. Falano, Mr. Falano, what do we then do about public sentiments? Because if you also read... Uh, you know, some of the sentiments about what has happened or what has transpired in that community. I mean, I totally get what you're saying in terms of what the law prescribes and what the law envisages should happen in a scenario like that. But it does appear that as a result of precedence, the fact that communities that have done where these kinds of acts have been perpetrated have not gotten away with it. Collective punishment is what has been meted yes. out to them. It does appear yes. that there is some acceptance uh, within the Nigerian public that this is trite justice for communities that allow this sort of things happen amongst them. What do we do with sentiments that, you know, that are already espousing this sort of, not just fears, but almost like as if this is what any community would deserve were you to carry yeah. out this sort of thing against soldiers? Yeah. yeah. Now, that is an invitation to anarchy. Once you resort to mob justice... And we have a duty under our law, and under international law. The collective punishment in Nigeria, and under international law, is not permissible. And what I'm saying, with profound respect, what I'm saying, we must condemn the killings of soldiers, and indeed all Nigerians. We must now insist and institutionalize a system that will arrest killers of people and have them prosecuted. Once Nigerians can be made to believe that you will get justice at the end of the day, the resort to mob justice will stop. And it's not limited to the soldiers. In the case of O.D., Bayez, I mean, uh, Zaki Bam in Benue and Baramoto in Delta, it hasn't worked. But Mr. Mr. Falano, there's the just one thing that I, I ju just want, if you can hear me, Mr. Falano, just one statement, and if you can do this under 30 seconds, I think the point that Malkwe is making is this. There are certain institutions that represent the state, they are symbols of the states, of the 36 states of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And that, I think, is the point that Mr. President made. You don't attack a policeman. You don't attack a soldier. How do we manage that kind of thing when it happens? Please do that in 30 seconds. Standard for the entire country, gentlemen and ladies. We must have one standard that the life of every citizen must matter. But one life becomes when the life of human beings, a human being becomes so. But you, one of the things you champion is the rule of law. That is one of the things you champion, the rule of law. Now, the, the point that is being made here is, it's a policeman, a soldier of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, almost like saying a court. So if that kind of thing happens, what should be the response of the Federal Government of Nigeria? The response of the Federal Government of Nigeria is to ensure that the suspects are apprehended and charged before the court. And then you also ensure 
that the communities involved, you must get the leaders to appreciate that we are running a democratic society, a civilized society, that this should not be tolerated. But to embark on collective punishment. Well, well, yes, that, that, that point is, you, you made that point quite copious. To what Mr. Mr. Dr. Abayomi, I mean, you, you've spoken quite frequently about the patriots and the, the functions, you know, and all of that. So exactly how does that, in your opinion, come to play in this mix that we have right now? Well, well, I mean, the point I suppose what Mr. Fallon is actually talking about is how to standardize the rule of law in our nation. And basically the point he's making is that there's a crisis of the guidance of law and um, uh, systems that manage you know, remedies, problems and remedies. I think I kind of agree with him that there should be a system to deal with problems mm. in a proper nation. Is that a... You cannot have a situation where uh, everybody is a law unto himself. I, I, and I, I, I take it that part of the conversation that the patriots are intending to yes. have um, uh, has to do with this and a number of other issues. Precisely. Tell us about that. Well, you know, it, it, like I was saying, there's a problem with Nigeria. If you look at the situation that confronts us, I mean, you take our constitution today. In 2010, we have three alterations, you know, of the constitution. Then in 2017, we had the fourth alteration. Then again, we, we actually have the fourth alteration in 22 alterations in 2017. Then in 2018, we had another alteration. And now we've set up another constitutional amendment um, uh, conference, so to, so to say. The Eighth Assembly alone, the Eighth National Assembly, spent over one billion naira, over one billion naira, just to amend the constitution. Mm. So the issue for Nigeria, and it's important to understand, it's not just political, it's also economical. So is, is that part of the conversation that is happening today? That's part of the conversation. Okay. How do you now come up with a constitution that focuses more on the happiness... The question a number of people will be ask, asking will be, how do we have the acceptable representation? Because, you know, we've had this since like 2005 or so. Well, we'll get uh, acceptable. That's part of the discussion we're going okay. to have, you okay. know. If we're going to have a good constitution, how do we bring it about? Okay. How do we get the people to accept mm. the constitution? These are all the issues that is going to be all right. discussed uh, at the conference today. We we'll definitely look forward to that conversation, Dr. Yeah. Tunji Abayomi, yes. human rights activist and legal practitioner. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much. Jemeline, it's back to you. Yeah, so Mr. Fekba, just give us your closing thoughts now. From the look of things, how should we be approaching these matters? Well, uh, it's quite unfortunate that this has happened. It's a, it's a national calamity. But I want to, you know, insist that there has to be a greater participation of the citizenry in the affairs of government, one. Secondly, there has to be a deliberate and conscious and sustained effort to carry out attitudinal reorientations of the citizenry, because when people just talk about uh, citizens or the people and all of that, oftentimes these people are just responding to existential threats to in, within their environment. Mm. What is the role of the ordinary citizen when they see a military man, when they see a police officer, when they see a custom officer and all of that? So there has to be a way to bridge the gap between the civilian populace and the, and the military, and the police and the military. They must, you know, they must continuously carry out training, uh, public advocacy, and all of that. And the national orientation is also putting together a document that will also promote our value system. Because when you look at everything we are talking right, 
everyone in Nigeria is holding on to your, to your tent, O Israel. That is what it is seeming. And that's why you see, I, I was telling you that if you are preaching nationalistic patriotism and all that, you are almost, almost operating at a different mm. climb, you know, because Sorry. others are looking at their own uh, ethnic conclave, and you are telling me I should be preaching nationalism. If, mm. it, if the ownership structure okay. is so skewed, then we have to yeah. enter into the free, just the same way that uh, others are holding all up right, so their own... Uh, Mr. Father, now, uh, in, in less than 60 seconds, if you can, what would you like to see change to avoid no, this kind one. of scenario? Number one, those who have been arrested should be arraigned while we try to look for the others. Number two, there should be a commission of inquiry set up by the government of Delta State to get to the root of this problem. Thirdly, please let us stop ethnicizing crisis. And very important, in 2012, I think, uh, in the House of Rep, the, the, the members that expose or that alleged corruption against the bank calling leadership. And of the Yoruba extraction, in 2017, the House member that accused the Ogara of fighting, you know, is uh, uh, Honorable uh, Abdumumini Jibril. In both cases, incidentally, I was briefed to go to court, and we won those cases <laughs> to the extent that you cannot you cannot uh, uh, suspend a member of the legislature. Okay. But when you do that, you have denied the members of that community the opportunity to make to have representation. So All please, right. let us treat criminality whenever it occurs All right. and apply the rule of law. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Idi. Mr. Femi Fallon, our senior advocate of Nigeria. Mr. Kasim Afegba is also a former member media strategy committee, PTC of APC, and now convener. So he's a South-South rebirth. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time today.